hello welcome welcome everybody hello hello welcome 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 bella hi hi welcome everybody hope you're doing awesome good to see you all make sure you share 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 right now we're gonna have a great evening together welcome welcome sarah good to see you welcome all the way from usa hello hey. hello sarah long time no see yeah. Welcome, lose me. Good to see you. Hello, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Welcome, Elizabeth. You're at the right place at the right time. Welcome, Carol. Welcome, Rita. Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome. Hi guys, welcome, good to see you again. Welcome Mugisha. Hello, hello, Soso. Hey Soso. Hi Nicole. Hey How are Nicole. You? Esther, welcome. We miss you guys. Welcome, welcome. Oh welcome Enak. Hey, 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 hey. Thank you for tuning in guys. Oh, we miss you so much. Welcome, Daniela. Hello, Christian. Oh, the goodness of God. Hey. Hello, Sandrine. Hi. Hey, Stacy. Hey, Stacy. How are you? How are you? Don't forget to share. Hello Abraham, how are you? Hi. Good to see you all. Hello. Hi. How are you guys? Wow, make sure you share this video right away. Invite your girlfriends, invite your brothers, your moms. Hello. Hey Peggy, how are you? Hello everyone. We're gonna wait maybe one more minute just to give you the time to <laughs> on is sure, eh? yes. Hello, e. to invite your friends. We don't want you to miss any part. Greetings. Oh, welcome from Australia. Send us the hits from Australia. Hey, how are you? Don't Hi. forget to share. <laughs> Hello Nelly, good to see you. Hello. We're excited. Hi Doina. Hello. Hi. Hello, hello. Come on, we want you to participate tonight, so get ready. Oh, We're together. Today. We're gonna do questions like we did last time, towards the end. Hello, Nelly. I think we can. Can we start? Yeah, one more minute. One at minute. Five. Hey, Dada, how are you? Welcome, Hi, Judy. Hi, Dada, Judy. Hi. If you're here, just say I'm here. We want to see everyone who's here. Type something in the comments if you haven't yet. I know you would love this song. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi, Shanique. How are you? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, Benit. How are you? Hi. Welcome, Show welcome. us that you're here. Hello. Hello, hello. 
Luke, hi, Judy, Douglas, hey, hey, hey Douglas. first time joining, I hope you're going to enjoy today, Sunday, Grace, Bella, that's so awesome, hi, Welcome, Claudia, Vanessa, Vanessa. Vanessa. Hallelujah. Hello, Tammy. Tamara, good to see you. No grave can no hold my grave. body down. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. There ain't no grave gonna hold your body down. Ay, 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 ay. Are you excited like I am tonight? Welcome, welcome. Cesarano. <laughs> hola, hola, Mexico. Ah, okay, we can give it. We can start now. All right. I hope you guys can hear us well. I think they can if hear us. If you hear us well, just do this for us. Let me for write us. the song down. Stacy, you can write down the song for those who are asking. Yes. Right. So, welcome back. Pastor Bless, hi. Yes, welcome everybody. It's good to see you. And uh, here we are again. Today I wanted to do something special because we have a Mother's Day coming up this Sunday. Mm -hmm. uh, I just decided last time uh, we had an amazing time with mm -hmm. uh, Rafi. Uh, conversation with the PK it was really enlightening. And I know you're able to help a lot of uh, a lot of people so i decided for this mother's day coming up to do a conversation with a daughter Ex yes exactly with the same girl mother, here mother daughter yeah. conversation mother daughter can you believe this is my girl yeah. hello welcome Together. everybody hey thierry hey. anyway so i decided we do a conversation with a daughter for this mother's day yes. coming up and um this is, uh, it's, it's, we're just going to share our journey, which is, uh, for me today, it's a very emotional for me. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I hope you'll be blessed. So, so, so what's the topic, first of all? The topic is the seed of rejection. That's right. Right. So some of you may be wondering, why are we doing this, right? Yeah. Anyway, a few months ago, I had a vision, and in the vision, I saw myself, and uh, I was sitting somewhere, and this person came to ask me a question. Mm -hmm. And when that person came to ask me a question, there was a, an older man, I, I remember he was white with a long white beard, who was sitting way far on the other side. Mm -hmm. So when this person came to ask me that question, I pointed uh to that older wise man, I say, go ask that question to that to that older man. And as that person was walking towards that man, mm -hmm. I heard the man talking to me. The, old, the, the old older, man. yeah, older man talking to me. And he said, the answer of this person is in your journey. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's what motivated me. So it's like God was speaking to me. Uh, there's a lot of people out there who are looking for answers, who have questions in their hearts. And, uh, and my journey, whether it's my journey or my, my daughter's journey or anybody, the answer reside for me in that case, resided in my journey. Mm -hmm. So that's when I started talking about my journey in a more specific way. Right. Because I know there's somebody out there who has a lot of questions or who's looking for direction. And uh, the way my walk with God or my life in itself uh, has the answer, you know, uh, is in, in my journey for that person. So I'm hoping mm -hmm. that uh, you guys will be blessed and uh, whoever is listening, you will be blessed and you'll find yeah. answers in my journey as I share. And uh, because... It's really putting yourself out there, out there. you know, yeah. and even as, as my person, who I am, I'm a very private person. Mm -hmm. So are you. So mm -hmm. putting the most vulnerable areas of your life out there, it takes a lot of courage, but I know the motivation mm -hmm. 
is because God wants me to share, yeah. to be a blessing to somebody else. So I, I just I just pray that you will be blessed. What do you think is your motivation to do what you're doing, mm. to talk about your story? Yeah, so initially, uh, I started one day just by making live videos. I would say just teachings, you know. Yes, based on personal experience, but without really sharing any, you know, personal mm -hmm. stuff besides what I chose to share. Mm -hmm. um, but on this, on the same note, you mm -hmm. know, I realized the things that I go through, especially when I, I listen to people talking, I notice there's, we don't go through the same stuff, mm -hmm. but it kind of goes around the same kind of thing. We all kind of have the same struggles uh, when I hear people talking and I'm like, you know what, I need to give my contribution and I would find it somewhat, I don't know, selfish to maybe keep your experiences to yourself and... Mm -hmm. Um, cause there's things that I overcame and I feel like, you know what, why not story tell? Why not share with somebody how I came out, mm -hmm. you know, at least what I go through and what we go through is not in vain. That's and, right. um, we always said we're doing things for the glory of God, but I think we often neglect the painful, maybe vulnerable stuff. Mm -hmm. Cause it's really, uh, like you said, it's exposing yourself. Like we're sitting here talking to thousands of people who don't see their faces, That's right. but everything everything to the glory of god nothing you sh you go through should go to waste mm -hmm. so that's kind of my motivation and, and you that. know the thing about vulnerability is when you expose your vulnerability there's a way that you know people start connecting with you in a deeper way in yes, any relationship true. when you you what you portray is always strength people exactly people have a hard time mm -hmm. connecting with you mm -hmm, so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if not that I'm doing that because I'm looking for connection. I'm doing that because I want to be a blessing to people and for God to touch and answer one person. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, we're in a, any relationship, if you want a deeper relationship, with, whether it's a friend, husband, any relationship, it's, it's the vulnerability of your life that connected, connect you stronger mm -hmm. than the strength. So, you That's know, true. I thought I should just put that one out there. That's so true. let's not be afraid to be vulnerable with the people we trust. Yes, definitely. So I'm going to ask you a few questions because this story is, is both of us. You know, it's, it's amazing how my, my, you know, we're so connected and stuff. But I want to ask you a little bit. I think you shared about this story already at church, at Crosspoint Church. That's right. Uh, she has a message called Crossroads. So maybe later you guys can watch it. But today we're... You know, we're going to go through it a little bit deeper and see the connection between the both of us here. So I want you to just explain a little bit to those who are watching, you know, a little bit of your background. So when you came to Canada, how old were you? That's right. You know, tell us a little bit about your first experiences here. Yeah. So, you know, I came to Canada, I was 20. Like uh, many of us, we came to, you know every African's dream is to come to America. So I came to Canada, God made it happen. And uh, I was in Montreal in 1996, I was almost 20. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then through through a friend, I met, I met with your dad. That was, mm -hmm. so I arrived here in 1996, May, I met your dad in October. And, uh, and when I met him in October, he had to move to Calgary, right after, yeah. like two days after. So, and then we started having a long distance re relationship mm -hmm. and uh, I was in Sejep, I was young, you know, with uh, my life, I thought it was going to have a powerful life ahead. Mm -hmm. You know, I had dreams, aspiration, mm -hmm. but one of my greatest desires was just to go to school, make, mm -hmm. go to school because I wanted my parents to be proud. That's what you do as a young kid. Uh, school is something that is very important. So anyway, so uh, two days after your dad moved uh, to Alberta because he just finished high uh, university. He got a job here in Calgary. And uh, so, so through that, you know, I uh, ended up moving a year after, right after I finished Cégep in mm -hmm. Quebec. So then I moved, I moved to Calgary. So and you had, did you, you had no family here? No, just, no. Just no, I had nobody. I think yeah. I was the, there was few, few, few randis, if I can say that way in this city, that I knew yeah. few people, but if not, there was nobody. It was in 1996. It was a long mm -hmm. time ago. Mm -hmm. Calgary mm -hmm. was uh, pretty empty of, uh, 
the majority of immigrants so mostly Sudanese Somalian but we mm -hmm. didn't have I didn't I didn't know anybody really except I, I uh, Rafi's dad so mm -hmm. I moved in May mm -hmm. and then we moved in together mm -hmm. and then uh, he, you know he, he came back to the Lord because he was back sick then and all this stuff mm -hmm. and uh, and then I got pregnant with you Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's really where the story begins. It's really the story of how my pregnancy started and the effect of the way my pregnancy was affected uh, Rafi's life, if that makes sense. So then I got pregnant from nowhere. You know what I'm saying? You were how old? I, was that? You were 20? I was, I was 20. I was about 21. Yeah. You were my age. Yeah. That was exactly right. your age, right? So then I got pregnant, which was... Um, uh, was uh, a very hard time for me mm -hmm. because and, and why is that uh, why is that because pregnancy was not on my radar mm -hmm. number one and uh, number two I mean I didn't come to Canada to be pregnant <laughs> I came to Canada I came to Canada to study that's when they sent me <laughs> She didn't come to Canada to be pregnant. <laughs> At that moment, right? <laughs> you know what? Now we can laugh about it anyway. So, so right? mm -hmm. you know, pregnancy wasn't on my radar. It was the last thing on my mind. So you can imagine a, a young girl of 21. Nowadays, 21 years old is very wise when you have grown in this city. But when you come from Africa, you're still a kid. Yeah. And uh, so I got pregnant. It was very, <sighs> it was a very tough moment for me. So just sorry, just to cut you there, because mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure many can relate here, but I want to know what was maybe your greatest fear? Was it your family finding out? First of all, you moved with some guy they don't really know. When nobody was for they everybody were not agreeing was with against it. it. So were you afraid of your parents' opinion? Were you afraid of the being alone here? I mean, I, it was everything, you know, combined. First of all, when I moved here, everybody was so against it, you know? Yeah. Because he, he was somebody I had just met, but... Um, you just don't move <laughs> from no, a city you, to a city. Move. One Sunday, she did a preaching. She's like, this is my story. You, the young ladies, don't repeat it. Please. Okay. I was don't move with some guy <laughs> after, I don't know, X time. Yeah, I was just young and restless and crazy, okay? Adventurous, <laughs> that's the word. <laughs> Anyhow, so, so then I get pregnant right away, you know? So my first, my first thing that came to me, it was, I'm just, I just destroyed my life. That's really yes. how I felt. I'm young, new in this city, have no idea what it is to even be pregnant because this wasn't something, yeah. you know, um, and then my life is over. That's what was my feelings. Mm. You know, I felt like my life was over. And then uh, my first instant right away when I found out was I'm going to remove the baby. It, it, there was no question about it. I'm going to go. You know, when you get pregnant, you feel it, but you're not sure. Mm -hmm. So when, so I said, I'm going to go to the doctor to make sure. But if I'm pregnant, then I'm going to remove it. I'm going to get the, the card you know, the abortion center and go remove this baby because I cannot destroy my life. Uh, for some of us from back home, Africa, you know, when you're pregnant as a young girl, you're like, you just destroy your life, you know? So, so I decided, me, I'm just gonna go remove the baby and that's it, that's all. There was no question in my heart if I should or should not. And I just had accepted Christ in my heart. So there was no sense of fear of God mm -hmm. for me because it's almost I was in a sense of a mode of survival. I need to survive. I need to get out of this here. And then I was so lonely. I have nobody to talk to. I was afraid to tell anybody. 
uh, I had left Montreal. Everybody was so against it. Mm. Uh, I couldn't talk to anyone in Montreal. So I couldn't tell, I couldn't tell my parents because I thought, oh my goodness, you know. Um, so you were planning just to abort this baby and kind of, you know, move. Yeah, just we go on with, with life. Yeah, mm -hmm. you just have an abortion and that's it. That's it. Uh, and then so uh, the night before I went to the doctor, then I had a vision. God visited me. And, and you were just a newborn again. Yep, I was newborn again. I was new in everything. New mm. in this relationship. New. Mm. Just new. Everything was new. So, so what happened is the night before, I made up my mind in my heart tomorrow when I'm going to see the doctor. And, he, and she tell me, it's a, it's a, I'm pregnant. I'm going to tell the doctor I'm going to remove my baby. And that was it. There was no question about it. And um, so, but the night before I went, then God visited me at night. And he, at night, he, he just gave me a vision, which you, you can follow in my message on Crossroads. I don't want to get into it because I want to talk about a lot and we don't have a lot of, a long time to talk about it. Anyway, God visited me and in the visitation, he, he gave me a choice mm -hmm. in the dream and it, it gave me two ways to go. And uh, in the dream, I decided I'm going to go the long way, the good way that was good. Although I didn't know what it is, I, I, was, I was saying the good way was. So the good way being keeping the baby or? So the good, so the thing is, uh, in the vision, I saw, uh, I saw a, a road. And in the road, there was two, two, two paths. on an intersection. On the crossroad, there was two paths. The, the short way was, it looked good but it was bad at the end and the voice told me the long way is going to be long hard but the end is good so as mm -hmm. i was on the intersection on the crossroad of that road i said okay why would i go a short way i'm going to take the long way and when i went on the wrong way then a lot of things happen anyway mm -hmm. i don't want to get into that but i woke up and i went to the doctor I, I even forgot about the dream it didn't mean much to me so i went to the doctor and the doctor told me you know, you're pregnant. And, uh, and I said, I want to remove the baby. And she said, okay, you know, in this, they make it easy to do whatever you want to do, whether it's good or wrong. I don't even remember the doctor telling me, are you sure? Did it? She didn't say nothing. She just, you know, doing her job, finished. And she came, she gave me a card of an abortion clinic, you know, so I went, as I pick up the card of the abortion clinic, and as I was going back in the car, suddenly the vision came back to me. Mm. It's like God revealed to me what that vision meant, right? Right. And then, and I, and then I, I understood. I thank God for the Spirit of God because He's there at the right moment for us. Uh, so he, he gave me the revelation what that mm. meant. Because I guess in the vision, there was no baby. There was just two intersections. That's right. It was just a decision that I had to revelation. make. Mm. Yeah. Which for me means every decision of our lives, whether good mm -hmm. or not, mm -hmm. impact our, our journey in the, long, yes. in the long run, right? So, so, and so when I remember the vision and the decision I made in the vision, then I spoke to God. I said, you know what, God? Because I promise you in the vision that I will take the wrong way, this is the way I'm going to go. Mm. And so I just, I just made that decision because by nature, I'm a very loyal person, mm -hmm. right? So, and I said, okay, if in the vision I say, God, I'll take the long way, then sure. I'm going to take the, the long journey. But then the journey became hard. Mm. Although I made a decision in my heart, to do the way God wanted me to do. Uh, the journey was still very hard. The same way he said it, it would be very hard. And uh, it was very hard because at that point, uh, I was living with my then boyfriend. Mm. And uh, I felt like the whole world just came against me. I'm like, God. So it, it became became a journey of me and God. Mm -hmm. And So it was, still up to now, you, you don't have anyone to really share this with? No, I... Yeah, I have no one to share with. I don't feel that I can share it to anyone That's because right. 
now the struggle is not anymore the pregnancy is the struggle i'm doing this for god exactly you know and you were I'm, just born again which yes is shocking. yes so. i made a promise to god so i'm gonna do it but then um you know how it's it's when you're alone and lonely a lot of thoughts come to you and uh, mm -hmm. and it became a journey with me and god and uh, and there came a time where it was extremely hard to me where i felt like i'm being forced to be in this situation of pregnancy because if it was for me that was my thinking then you know i'm a young christian really i don't know much about anything about god except that he is god <laughs> and the god that i knew when i was growing up which was really out of my catholicism background right yeah. so so i remember there was days where i'll be so depressed because i'll be thinking about my life right yes the dreams the, uh -huh. the hopes everything. the dreams the hopes i'm like so i'm done with school i'm i mean like my whole life just just went mm -hmm. down in the water and then i remember there was time a very hard time for me i would just go speak with my god and i tell him how he just won his ways in everything. He doesn't consider our feelings, our emotions, because, because I didn't know this God. So that's how I perceive him. But then I ended up putting all my pain and my suffering on you in the womb. Because then how can I put a fault on God? Then I started going two words. Then that's when I started just speaking to you harshly. And uh, I would start speaking to my pregnancy, my baby at that time. I didn't even know what I was doing. I was just down, struggling, in pain. And I was just tell Rafi in the womb how she's the cause, the cause of my pain, how she came to destroy my life. You know, when I think about it, it's just too emotional. And... Um, Maybe it went on for weeks where I would just pour my pain and my struggling on you. And, um, yeah, so. So this season went on for, I think many, many people maybe can relate. Mm -hmm. um, went on for a few weeks or whatever. Yeah, it, and so d did you feel like you were mad a little bit maybe at God for showing you something that kind of or what were you feeling? I felt I felt trapped. You felt trapped. Yeah, I felt trapped because deep inside having an abortion was the the easiest way. You get it done with it and then you continue life. That's what you think when you're in that place. Because you want to find a solution right away, right? So, because I made a promise to God, mm -hmm. for me, I felt trapped. So, you in my tummy and God were the reason why I wasn't struggling. Yeah. So, unfortunately, I started speaking harsh words on you when you were a baby. You know, telling you, you the reason of my pain and my struggle mm -hmm. and all this stuff it won't end for just few weeks so when did you uh let's say make peace then or accept the fact that this is it this is what's happening how many months along i mean you know the season i mean it's almost like he, i was mourning my hopes i was mourning my dreams i was mourning how i thought life could could go you know, and uh, and once I got beyond that, maybe a month, then I was able to accept my new life, my mm -hmm. new situation. Um, and yeah, and then I, you know, pregnancy became like something now that I have to, you know, yeah, just to live with. And uh, I remember after I called my mom, and I was so freaking out. So you called her to let her know or yeah because at, at that point i was maybe six months oh. pregnant yeah because when when i was pregnant the tummy was still the, the pregnancy was still so small i could yeah. keep it 
to anyone so anyway I remember I called my mom I was freaking out freaking out I'm like I would think she's gonna kill me she's gonna say why mm -hmm. and all this stuff anyway I called her and because they didn't know my boyfriend and they didn't know that's right so it's not like they were confident they were okay. safe so I called her and then I told her I'm pregnant and I thank God for my mom because she only she only asked me two questions mm -hmm. and she's like how is the dad taking it I say yeah he's fine mm -hmm. and then she said I'm so happy mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. she didn't say much she was just happy for me and uh, and I think that released me. That's that's a big release. Right it there. was a big release because it was my greatest fear. She was happy, yeah. and uh, and I thank God for her wisdom because if she had taken it the way I thought she yeah. would, it would have crushed for me. Sure. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Mm -hmm. So and then when she she gave me permission to be happy mm -hmm. for the baby, then I was okay. Yeah, yeah. you know. I think sometimes we need voices around us mm -hmm. that are important to to go with us in mm -hmm. those time seasons mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to give us affirmation regardless whether we did something good or wrong because yeah. you never know what goes in the heart of somebody mm -hmm. yeah so but I remember baby after it was okay so tell us mm -hmm. tell us about the birth now because now you told you spoke to your mom, you feel some sort of, you know, peace and release regarding that. Mm -hmm. My dad, I don't think he've ever, he never had an issue no. with it at all. No. So now you're, let's go to the part where you gave birth now. Yeah, because when you get pregnant, you feel like you the man, you can keep doing your life, living your life. <laughs> it's my life that's changing, you of know. Course. So, so, but I remember when I was about to give birth to you. I mean, you, the birth was so hard, and we actually almost lost you. But I remember the first two days. The first two days, for some reason. After the birth. After the birth, when mm -hmm. you were born. Mm -hmm. You were gorgeous. I mean, there, there's no baby as beautiful as Rafi. And uh, she was so gorgeous. But for some reason, I could not connect, mm -hmm. connect with you at the hospital. Mm -hmm. So I could look at you, I'm like, okay, this is my baby. It took two days, two days. And I would ask God, I said, God, please remove. Why I'm not able to connect with my, with my baby. And uh, after two days, God lifted it off. Mm. It just... It just came out. It's like there was a blockage between me and my bo my baby. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe because of all the pain I went through in the beginning of the of the of the pregnancy, mm -hmm. and uh, God just just lifted it, and then that was it. By this time, you were at home now. Yeah, I was at home. You're amazing. I mean, <laughs> Rafi wouldn't let anyone hold her except me yeah of course. <laughs> you know up to age maybe five <laughs> yeah so speaking of that can you talk a bit about because now the the connection is there so how was our relationship then growing up from zero to i don't know as a kid how was our connection how was our relationship oh my goodness i mean you you i was your world like any child the mom is the world you you were, you know, I was everything to you. You were everything to me. I mean, you know, it was so beautiful. There was, there was nothing there. But, you know, I, I almost, I always had a guilt inside of me. A guilt of knowing that, you know, I can't believe I wanted to, to abort you. Guilt about, I can't believe I spoke so much harsh word against you. And, uh, and I would feel shame. And then... At this point, I'm guessing because now you're uh, more involved in God. That's right. So um, I'm guessing as when you were pregnant, you didn't understand the power of words. So I'm guessing as you grew in Christianity, 
Yeah. You started to understand that. And yeah, because I was a baby Christian, right? right? I I didn't know nothing. Really, I didn't know nothing. I was just going after what I feel in my heart. Mm. I say what I feel. And for me, I didn't feel I was hurting you yeah. by talking harsh words in the womb. I didn't know nothing. But then as I got closer to God and I got to know the word of God mm -hmm. and I start realizing how there's power in the spoken words. Yes. And then, you know, so then I'm dealing with guilt of how I really, I spoke so harsh against you in the womb. I'm dealing with the shame to think about how could you want to abort, you know, uh, this baby. And then I'm like, all these words I spoke against her. So you know what I would do? Because I was like, I spoke words against her now. I need to take those words back. But unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. When a word is out in the atmosphere, it just has its effect. So I would pray, we would pray. And then at night, at night, I would start declaring the opposite of every word I spoke against you. Mm -hmm. When you're sleeping, you know, you don't know. And I would speak, you know, I would come against every word I spoke by, you know, replacing it with a positive word yeah. of the Bible, you know. I would say, you know what, Rafi, you are wanted, you are loved, you are needed. I'm glad you came to this earth because I was speaking the opposite of mm -hmm. all this when you were in my womb, in my pain, and in my struggle. So, so every day, I don't know, I've done it all my life. <laughs> and then, but yet, the, I always felt this thing inside of me, you know, that, that it's not going away. I could feel it's not going away. And, uh, and then, yeah, and that was it. How mm. well, did you feel, how, how was it for you growing up? Hmm. Well, growing up, obviously, when it comes to relationship with my mom, she was, like I said, she was my world, right? Even up to now, we're always, we've always been very close. And um, she's always, you've always given spoken good words and you've always been there. But for some reason, I've always felt as a kid and as a teenager, like an accident or like unwanted. So I don't know if you remember, sometimes she would tell me, she would do something for me and I'd be like, yeah, it's cause you know, you have to do it because I'm here, you know, I'm your daughter, but you don't, you don't really want to. Like as a kid, I would say stuff like that and she would always try to oppose it. She mm -hmm. would say, no, I'm doing it because I'm your mom, because I love you. And just for some reason, I just felt like my existence was like a mistake and that it was not wanted. And sometimes it would make me feel crazy because I grew up in a household where everyone was so loving. Everyone is, I love you. I care for you. But despite that, despite the prayers, despite the nice words, despite the nice actions, despite spending even all my time with my mom, I felt unwanted, not only by her, but just my overall existence. You felt like you were an accident I on felt, this planet. Yeah, I felt like, you know, it's really hard to explain, but almost as if your existence is just not it. It's not wanted and not because of anything that someone would do it's just a feeling and i don't know there's probably other people who maybe you have that feeling you just feel like you're unwanted unloved you just you, it's it's the seed that's why we call this uh the title of this the seed of rejection at the time i didn't know what it was because she had not yet told me this story this story she told me a, a few years ago and i'm gonna explain about how i was delivered from it a little bit later on but all my life, I felt very unwanted. And it didn't help because at school, I was attacked. I was really bullied at school. And I already had like low self-esteem. I thought I was very ugly as a kid. I thought I was unattractive and um, just rejected. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, different encounters. Sometimes I'd be in the bus. I remember one day some guy you know and this girl who were in high school they come to me and a young girl we're two black girls and they sit us next you know one next to the other and he's like can i tell you something you're ugly and you're beautiful he pointed and he pointed to me as the ugly one and you know it just 
freaked me out. So a lot of different altercations like that naturally already made me feel rejected. So I thought that maybe the way I feel is because of the bullies or whatever, which it probably was, you know? So I, I, I couldn't really put a finger on it because my childhood already had its own personal struggles. You know, growing up with my brother who was autistic, I didn't get enough attention. So I would isolate myself, even though my parents always did their best. Naturally, as a child, I would push myself away and I would run in my room or so I just felt so you couldn't useless. reconcile yeah the feeling of feeling unwanted when you were surrounded with exactly. people who loved and you. that's why especially as a teenager I felt like I was crazy because mm -hmm. I'm like why and there's you know there's probably some of you out there you think that you need more attention you think that you need more compliments you think that you need more people to appreciate you but it's not that because that doesn't fix anything I'm talking because you guys have always given all that you could, but yet I yeah. still felt like... So, that. yeah, so when I got pregnant with you, I really rejected you from the womb. Yes. Without me knowing what I was doing, not knowing that it would affect uh, your life spiritually and even in your, in, in your soul. So, the, yes. the, you know, it happened in your womb, but because you're not aware... Exactly. So as a as a child, you couldn't reconcile. You just the sense a sense of being like you're an accident. You know, you don't belong here. You're just here. Here, yeah. 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 Do you? I think. Do you remember any scenarios where you're like, maybe this is the result. Perhaps this is the result of maybe what happened. You know what? I always knew in my spirit. I always knew because sometimes we would have behavior and attitude. You know, I would say something to you, be like, yeah, yeah, it's because you're a mom. Yeah, yeah, it's because you have to say it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, things that any parents does to their children. Yeah. And I always knew. And he always, that's why I kept praying every night for you. Just trying to break that yoke mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of that seed that had been planted mm -hmm. uh, in the womb. And, uh, but God just chose to, to deliver you. A different a way. different way yeah yeah and that's and it's encouraging to know because <clears throat> sometimes we make mistakes and we try to to fix it ourselves. Mm. that's what she did she was trying to reverse the words you mm -hmm. know you know that's what you would think would be the right thing mm -hmm. which is a great thing to do but don't rely on your own strength because when God really chooses a day to deliver someone he'll do it so um that's, it was encouraging when I heard your testimony. Yeah, I think I, <laughs> I was trying to fix yeah. a mistake. Mm -hmm. Instead of going to God, mm -hmm. God, please, you know, can you help me? How do we, can you pray and deliver my daughter? I was trying to fix it, you know. Yeah. And there was and nothing it's... wrong with that because I know those words took roots somehow, mm -hmm. you know. Although it did not remove that seed uh, that was planted in you mm -hmm. as a baby, yeah. Mm -hmm. And did you ever think, you know, to share maybe that story with me? Why, or... I mean, from the time we were 15, because, I mean, you were too young, I couldn't tell you that. Mm -hmm. But every time I wanted to, right? I'm like, yeah, when she's 16, I need to tell her the story. Because for me, it was very important. Mm -hmm. I tell her the story so that this can go because i understood you know i understood i had to share with you so that you can be free you mm -hmm. know but it, i never felt the perfect timing mm -hmm. when you're 15 i felt like no it's not working i could never feel that it was right and then at one point and then i stopped mm -hmm. you know even trying to figure out how how and when to do it because then it becomes very hard for me to keep saying, oh, I should, I should, I should. And, and then, you know, at one time, and I just stopped. And, and at this point, was all the feelings of guilt gone yet? No, no, no. The just... feelings never left me. I just learned to live with that. Mm. And uh, because life happened, Amadou happened, you know, ministry happened. There was a lot of things to deal with. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like you put it at the back of the mind. Mm -hmm. I'll deal with mm -hmm. it whenever I deal with it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's really what happened. Mm -hmm. So then we went to Montreal. Yeah, so then we went to Montreal. And again, at this point, I didn't know anything. We never spoke about it. Although my mom and I, we talk about everything all the time. We're always together, like, all the time. 
And there's nothing, I don't think there's anything we don't talk about, but I didn't know at this point. And um, I was still feeling that feeling, but I didn't think it was a problem because I thought it was me. Like you don't, you know, you're just insecure or whatever. So I didn't think of it as an issue. I never even told her, oh, I don't feel this, I don't feel that. Until maybe after I would tell her, I don't feel loved by anyone, you know? Mm -hmm. But um, now we're going to, I think, uh, I don't I think I was 19. Mm -hmm. We were in Montreal. My mom, there was a season where she would drive me to work like every day. And that was great because we lived quite far. And um, it was a good 45 minutes. It was a good 45 minutes. And my mom and I in the car, it's the best. Mm -hmm. We... <laughs> We can write books. We can even have a, we should have a talk show in the car. We're just amazing. We're machines. We talk about everything. We go crazy. We laugh. So that was the time where we had our conversations. So then after, I think around May, I don't know if it was 2018. I think it was 2018. I started, I had a question and this question comes out of nowhere. And my question was, Hey, by the way, how did you feel when you found out you were pregnant with me? I never asked her that question before. And I asked her, I don't know, like five, six times. And um, each time I would ask, it's either we were so close to my job, so we didn't have time, or she would say, oh, you know, she would answer vaguely. And I was like, okay. So then I would ask her again another day. I was so persistent because for some reason that question kept coming up. Not because I thought there was something wrong, but out of curiosity, because logically, she was 20, she was alone. It was probably difficult. So I just wanted to chat about it. I think the Holy Spirit was leading But it was, exactly, it was just the Holy Spirit that kept bringing that question because mm -hmm. he wanted to do something. And then, actually, she never answered the question, finally. And um, a few months went by and we flashed back to our, our first young adults retreat at my church. Um, I'm so glad you came because if you didn't come, what happened yeah. couldn't, you know, so we go to the retreat now and um, I think I was tired. You were tired of me huh? the, like the months before. It's like that demon inside <laughs> that seed of rejection was just bothering me and bothering everyone. It was just I think that that spirit knew it had to go. That's all I can say. So we get to the, the, the retreat and um, we're having a great time as usual. And uh, it was the Saturday of the retreat because we go for a weekend and um, we have a, a teaching time, a prayer time, a worship time. And it was so powerful. I don't know if you remember, but the atmosphere that was there was like an angelic atmosphere. And um, it was amazing. It was amazing. Uh, we were, all of us, even those that were, you know, a little bit colder, they became, you know, on fire for Christ. It was an amazing day. But that was the day God chose, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save you, right? So, after the last, you know, after one of the sessions we had, it was powerful, we have a little break where we can go and hang out. And after that session, which was weird because I was so on fire, and that as soon as the meeting ended, it's like something took over me, and... Um, it's a little bit, it was a scary day and I was even scared of myself because I felt like possessed, to be honest. Um, I think I even told you, you know what, I want to get out of here, out of nowhere. So then I went for a walk. I went for a walk while everyone else was having fun. And I think there was something that triggered that. I'm not going to get into details about it, but I was alone at a certain time and I, something triggered that. Um, feelings of rejection and that was normal for me because I was I've been dealing with that all my life but for some reason that day I wasn't able to shake it off because mm -hmm. usually I can say you know what in Jesus name get out of here or you know what Rafi get out of your feelings it doesn't matter move forward but for some reason that day I couldn't shake it off so I go walk and we were in the woods right I walk in the woods and I go I walk so far by a waterfall and I felt like killing myself. And I'm sorry to say this, it's, maybe it's a trigger for some of you, but I need to say my truth here. I felt suicidal and um, because I am born again, I know that that's from the devil. So I just started trying to pray. I was trying to pray. I'm like, you know what? This is not me. This is not me. You know, just 
So I would stand up and I would try to go back to where there was people so I could feel safe. But then I kept walking back to the waterfall. I would sit down, I would stand up. And by this time, I even took my camera out because I feel like something is taking over. And I looked at myself in so my camera. can I stop you? Yeah. What, what was the feeling? You feel like nobody, you want to yeah. end your life? Like So what I felt before getting to the part of, you know, feeling very disgusting, I just started hearing audible voices. And thank you for mentioning that because I almost missed it. Mm -hmm. I started having audible voices saying, we're so tired of you. You know, you're unwanted. Your parents are so tired of you. You're a burden. So all these words, I started hearing words coming and I'm like, oh my, and it was tormenting. It was tormenting because I was fighting this spirit, but at the same time, I'm me, you know? So I started hearing those voices, you're unwanted, and then, you know, nobody loves you, just please end your life or run away, no one wants to see you. So that's why I was walking away, because people were having fun, right? So I went away and I started fighting this feeling. I was crying, my eyes were bloodshot, my eyes were almost black, and um, no matter how, you know, I was trying to pray, but it, it wasn't working. So that went on, I think I was in there for a good 45 minutes by myself, and I was fighting for my life, still hearing these voices telling me really bad stuff. And then, and then really, it was, a, it was a demon trying to separate, isolate you so that isolate. you just can do your the worst yeah because the rest of us who were having fun having fun the service was so powerful so the talk about God that revelation you had powerful. though about the fire and the serpent that we were talking about earlier oh i was talking about how paul i don't remember which island he went on and then he put fire on and then a serpent came out to bite him and then and then he shake it off i was saying how when you are in the presence of god when the intensity of the presence of God is there, demons cannot stay there dormant. You know, sometimes there are certain things that the enemy, you know, we deal with it and they are dormant. They are attached right. to you slowly, mentally, you think is your emotion, your mind, but there is a spirit behind it. That's right. So before, because there was a, a very high supernatural activities and God really wanted to set you free, that demon that was in you tormenting you just could not handle it that's right you know it just wanted to just finish it with you just to yeah to finish with yeah you. So, so i think i think that moment it was either you know you get delivered or it takes you down mm -hmm. so i was in that fight i felt like i was battling for my life and you know it's such a disgusting feeling you know feeling like you're 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 not wanted and you know but you know it's just the enemy because it doesn't align with the word of God at all mm -hmm. so now 45 minutes later still hearing these voices I was able to get out of that waterfall area and to go to my room because we had little rooms there we were having a retreat people were still enjoying having fun so I go to the room now and I'm still battling I'm like what is going on and it was so weird because it's like I felt like if this thing doesn't stop, it's going to take over me completely. So I was almost going to become one mm -hmm. with this thing. Because up to this point, I was able to say, this is me, this is not me. But it's almost as if it was going to take over. And at this point, like I said, my eyes are, are pitch black. I'm still, you know, makeup is coming down. And then my mom, she comes up. Because I think somebody saw me. I don't know what. So she came up in the room. And tell us, tell us about that when you came up in the room. So when I came in your room, I saw you, the look um, Rafi was giving me, I knew it was beyond her. I knew there was a spirit behind, even the way you are acting, behaving, and the way you're talking with a very, um, it was a, it's, it's a re demonic, it was demonic, it was unclean. Yeah. It was really... No, I know, because when she came... She came to the door and I don't remember exactly what I told her, but she said, oh, yuck. <laughs> she said, almost disgusted. No, yeah, because I said something to you and the way you replied yes. to me. But it was more than that. Yeah. It was what was behind it. Yes, it was really, di I could feel the disgust in it. Yeah. I, could, I knew it was no you. And then I just left her. I went downstairs 
because I said this one I cannot fight she can. by myself. And then me, because I was already hearing those voices. That voice is telling me, you see, even your mom, she's tired of you. Can you please finito? We're tired of you, you know. <laughs> And she even sent somebody else upstairs. And I told that person, who sent you here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was surprised by the things I was saying and the like, authority and the strength in a bad way that was coming out. And uh, I said, tell me who sent you here? And the person is like, no one. I'm just here because I, I love you. And I, and I started laughing. I started laughing uncontrollably because this spirit was, it, it was disgusting. Mm -hmm. And I said, she sent you here, didn't she? My mom yeah and uh anyways long story short then we go back because we had another session and i'm still being tormented you know i'm just at this point i'm just sitting there like this i force myself to be in that meeting because you know whatever it is what it is and then we were having an activity where the young adults were writing down if you've been to encounter retreat for people who live in calgary you know what it is you write on a little piece of paper maybe things you went through and you you uh, nail it to the cross, just as a representation that Jesus set us free and so forth. So while I'm sitting and writing down, I didn't have much to write because I was, I felt not rebellious, but I felt like- There was a lot of rebellion. Yeah. So I guess I felt rebellious mm -hmm. and I felt um, done. That was disgusting. So I was trying- <laughs> <laughs> No, her faith, you should have seen her face when she saw me the first time she was she was like that she said oh she, oh. <laughs> she <laughs> the devil's like you see she's tired so then we're writing down on the papers and my mom is there in the room because my mom was there and she calls me and she said we need to go outside and i'm like what my mom doesn't do this so then it's, it's like the little demon inside knew it's your time to go out because I felt like... So I just went out with my hands like this and I sat down waiting for her to say something to throw me an atomic bomb. I don't know why I was expecting... Yeah, the demon knew. The he demon was about knew to be that it was about to be exposed and released. So then she sat beside me and she told me the story that she just shared with you about her pregnancy journey, the words that were spoken. And in that moment, I was so, I felt naked. I don't know how to explain that. I felt exposed. So what happened to me? Mm. So Apostle was sharing on Jacob Ott because the yeah. camp we went to yes. is called Camp Peniel, yes, right? Yes, exactly. It was talking about Jacob, how he wrestled mm -hmm. with God. Mm -hmm. And uh, so as I'm writing, yeah. I felt the spirit of God telling me, you need to go to talk to her, you know, mm. so that this can be her pen, 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 yeah. And that was the first time in your life, right? That the, you felt that. That I felt like, okay, this is the peniel for Rafi. So I need to grab her during the service and go talk with God. Mm -hmm. So that's what happened. And you explained that to me too, mm -hmm. before telling me the story, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and she told me the story and everything. And, um, I don't really remember clearly, but I was really mad. I was mad um, more, more so because of the words that were spoken because um, I knew how much I suffered and I started to think she saw me suffering all these years. She didn't tell me, you know, all these words. How can I understand? Maybe you want to, you're mad because you're pregnant, you're scared, but why those words, you know, in the moment, that's how I felt. There was no compassion in me. I was just, blown away and um and you know it was hard but uh of course in the moment you can't see the good part of it in the moment it's just it's a mess mm -hmm. and um, you know you know before you go on i just i just want to encourage mothers there even daughters you know mm. there's so much brokenness in us but sometimes we want god to deliver or heal us from the secret of our past when God say I want you to confront it mm. and the healing and restoration will come through that mm. confrontation. confrontation because for me I had asked forgiveness to God but yet I was still mm. dealing with guilt but I needed to tell you the mm. story for you to be released and for me to be released because yes. I always felt like there was mm -hmm. always a secret mm -hmm. you yeah. know 
and yeah. that a secret you needed to know because you are part of it, you yeah. know. But you know, I mean, it's just so profound. Yeah. Anyway, true. so it's true. The, the confrontation is hard, but mm -hmm. the Bible says the truth shall set you free, mm -hmm. and the truth is not always beautiful but the truth definitely carries light and power mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and did you feel released in the moment how did you feel after saying it after ex sharing your story it was too too hard for me because it's like it became real again right mm -hmm. it became real again and i felt like i just put a knife you know in your tummy just hurt yeah. you so and bad did you know that the spirit that was the seed of rejection in me was connected? Yeah, I, I always knew it. I always that knew day? It. Yeah, yeah, I always knew it. I just was never, I never felt it was never the time to yes. do it. You yeah. know, because I thought for you, as a daughter, um, like she's young, is she, will her young mind understand it or handle it? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That was really my biggest issue. And so I always pray, talk to God to, to deliver you. Yes. But he chose to deliver you in a different that day, way, right? That Camp Penyel. So then we, now she shares with me that. We didn't have much time to be talking about it. I was silent. I just said, okay, that's what you want to tell me. So now we go around the campfire because they, the young adults had finished their activity. They had to put their little papers in the fire. Um, we missed out on that part because we were together outside. So now we're with the rest of the young adults sitting around the fire and... I don't know if we put anything in the fire, but I remember you started, we were crying, but she, you started to speak words to me. So all my life, she's told me I'm special, I'm this, but this day, she, she took me, I don't know how I ended up in that position, but she held me like that. This six foot tall girl, I don't know how, she held me like that. And I started to cry and my voice was like the voice of a baby, a newborn. And I started to, to cry like a baby. I was surprised myself saying, mommy, mommy, mommy. And she would say, it's okay, my baby. And she would say, I love you. I, da, da. So each good word she would speak, we're, you know, we're happy to have you. Mm -hmm. You're wanted. After a few words, I would puke, puking on the floor. And I would come back crying again, like a baby again. She's holding me. She's holding me. She said, Rafi. You're not a mistake, Rafi, da da da. And these words were serious deliverance. I started puking again on the floor. And we were, so I don't know how long we stayed like that because- The thing what happened when you came and sit on me, I saw you like a baby back in my womb. So everything I had been doing all my life, it's like God just, it's like God just, just came and do a reverse. reverse. It's like he brought me, mm. you back in my womb. Yeah. So that I can speak. It's it's so powerful, it's just, so profound. You know what? So wow. I can speak what I would have spoken exactly in a different yeah. circumstances yeah. as a as a, as a mom. Mm -hmm. So you know, I start speaking. You were like a baby. You were crying like a baby. You know, but then God was delivering was you powerful. through that. He was just setting you free. It's really like through that. It was like reversing a curse. You know. Yeah. Words are so powerful, and the words that she was speaking that day were, were just really setting me free. Man. Yes. And how were you feeling? Were you feeling a change in you as well, or? No. After that, I felt mad. I felt angry. I felt like it was it was a lot of emotions yeah. at yeah, that point. But you, you know, to see you setting free, to see God removing that seed. Of you know of rejection mm -hmm. out of my own mouth, the very mouth that mm -hmm. cursed her mm -hmm. is the very mouth that blessed her, and it did a shift, a, shift, a, shift. a whole shift yeah. in that atmosphere. And at that moment, what's funny is that even though there was too much things happening, I felt like you're not crazy, and I felt like mad at the enemy for torturing me all my life, making me feel like those feelings were me. You know, so whoever you're, who's listening to this, who feels like feeling unwanted, feeling unloved, feeling like you're a mistake, I want you to know this is more than feelings. Mm -hmm. This is more than feelings. This is a spirit. This is a seed. We don't know where it comes from in your case, but in that moment, I felt mad in a good way towards the enemy saying, you know what? I'm not crazy. And today, you know, we're being set free. 
That's right. You know, and then we stayed there for a while. We went, we stayed, we slept in the same bed, crying the whole night. It was, and it, let me tell you, it wasn't happy crying. You know, now we can see it that way, but in the moment, it takes a lot of grace. It mm -hmm. takes a lot of grace because you feel like everything you've known has been removed. So it's like it, exactly what you said. It's like a reverse. Mm -hmm. It felt almost as if I went back to being a newborn. Mm -hmm. Like your whole life was a lie. And I don't know. I don't know how you maybe have felt in that moment. Mm -hmm. But for me, it felt like your whole life was something you didn't know. And it was very weird. It was weird. Yeah, I, w I was free because finally, I tell you, you know, mm -hmm. I tell you something that's very important for you, for your life. And uh, so you can, you know, reconcile with who you are. Because at the end of the day, we might not put a word on what it is, but there's always internal conflict because yeah. we are spiritual being, you know. So I could see a lot of internal conflict in you when you were growing up. So finally, me being able to tell you, mm -hmm. it, it not only brought closure to me, but I, I felt like, okay, finally, she can find peace fully with who she is, you know? Yeah. I, I, you know, I give glory to God because he gave me the understanding to know mm -hmm. what were you struggling with. But the timing yeah. of, of, of your deliverance wasn't for me. It was for mm -hmm. God to set it at the right time. Mm -hmm. But uh, so to see you, I was so in pain to see that I've caused you so much pain. But then I was so, so it's like I went back to that day. Yeah. So there was a lot of things happening in my heart. But, you know, but at least that spirit mm -hmm. of rejection, of feeling unwanted was uprooted Uprooted's. from your life yeah. through yeah. the truth. There is no covering I could have done to you and uh, set you free i had to tell you the truth the way it was mm. as raw as it was with every emotion as it is so that you can find mm. peace you know but god delivered you and set you free that day and even after a few days it was still a lot for you emotionally to know that your mom really spoke so many harsh words to mm. her to to you right mm. but i'm happy i like what you said that god gave you understanding mm -hmm. Because the thing about the spirit of rejection is that it doesn't come in one form. Mm -hmm. So you can, it's not just a feeling of, oh, I feel like this. The spirit of rejection is sneaky because mm -hmm. it, it, it penetrates in different aspects of your life. So you may not even know that you're being tormented by this mm -hmm. spirit. Mm -hmm. it's, it's hiding. It's mm -hmm. very sneaky. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that God gave her understanding to know this is, you know, this is where it comes from. If not... I couldn't get my my full deliverance. Yes. So that's it's really powerful. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. So <sighs> the yeah the days after were were really tough, and the next day we went to church with the young adults, of course, and I didn't feel good. My eyes were just puffy. She was tired because we didn't sleep, and uh, it was time to give some testimonies by faith. I felt I need to say it out loud. I took the mic and I said. Because we're giving just short testimonies about how was the retreat. And I said, you know what? I used to feel unloved and unwanted, but today I know that I'm loved. And I was saying it by faith because I didn't feel that way. But I did feel, I felt like something that was tormented me was gone. So now I was just dealing with the repercussions, with the different feelings that get were involved with. That's right. On. And you know what's amazing about this story is, I don't know if you're free to talk about it was the fact that me having an abortion was not the issue for you. It yes. was the fact that the words I spoke, mm -hmm. that was very harsh for you. Yeah. Because those words had affected her. I think that's why it was very yeah. hard for yeah, you. Yeah, I was not angry with the fact that she wanted to abort me because I understand. That's exactly why I was curious. How did you feel? Because as a young lady... Uh, you know what? There's different things that go through your head, mm -hmm. you know? What hurt me was the words that were spoken out loud. So I even asked her that day, did you think those words or did you say them? And I understand the reason why I was so angry about that is because I know the power of words. I know what words can do. And for me to reconcile with her regarding that, I had to understand the context. She was a new uh, born again, she doesn't know what the power of words is. Mm -hmm. 
So, but it took time because I was like, how can you say that to your baby after deciding you're going to keep it? You know, you're, you want to ruin my life, but she didn't, she didn't know. Right. So that was the part that, that, that didn't sit in my, in my heart, the words. Yeah. And because it's the part that scarred you. Yeah. And then the words that she was telling me seemed so familiar, mm -hmm. you know, your burden and stuff like that. That's exactly the words I was hearing audible voices telling me that was the words i was hearing you're unwanted your parents are tired of you you know you're gonna ruin them so those were exactly what i was hearing so when she said it it's almost as if i know you i know those words mm -hmm. so that made me mad too mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it took time especially my mom and i were so close so i feel like you we talk about everything but this you didn't tell me you know and then i was also worried for her because she was feeling sad. She was feeling guilty. I can't imagine how difficult it was to even talk about this to your daughter. So too much mm -hmm. emotion. <laughs> I know. Too much emotions. Yeah. You know, but... Um, but God is faithful. But yeah. God is faithful. And I'm happy he did it there. So now when we think about Camp, Peniel, you know, Jacob wrestling with the angel. And the Bible says, and he restored my soul. He came face to face. He came with face God. to face with God and God restored his life, restored his soul. So I have a story yes. connected to that. Yes. And it was a fight. It was a fight, you know, so. God is so faithful. So this is our story. <laughs> and I want you to um, start sending your questions because mm. we're going to answer questions. It can be about you. It can be about our story. It can be about anything. Send your questions, um, and we're going to be answering them mm -hmm. in the comments here. Mm -hmm. So how was it, you know, after this retreat and after the, the days to come, how did you feel? Did you feel a difference in our relationship besides the, the emotional part? I mean, for me, I, I was okay, but I was hurting to see, because you were hurting, because it was a heavy news that was just being put on you. Although God delivered you and set you free, but you're still hurting. Because those, this is not something anybody want to hear. A child, you know. I didn't want you, you know. And uh, I've spoken all this stuff. So it was hard for me emotionally. But at least you are finding your freedom. For me, that's what was, you know, the most important for me. Yeah, so it took a yeah. few days. But the more you got better, the more I got better. Yeah, you that's know? right. That's yeah. right. And... Also, when you get, you know, delivered from that spirit, it feels great to not be tormented anymore. And it helps you to fight better. So when you start feeling those emotions, you know that it's not you for sure. Mm -hmm. And you're able to say, I come against it. And it took a few months of constant, like breaking down, breaking down my little feelings to the point where one day those feelings were gone. I've never thought that ever again. So, and I think it helped her too. Cause I stopped giving her a hard time because someone who's dealing with the spirit of rejection, they can be really annoying sometimes. <laughs> I'm just, I'm real as it gets. So it can be annoying because they're being tormented. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So send your questions. We're about to answer. Um, and then we're going to pray. And we're going to pray so that you stop getting bothered by this spirit of making, that's making you feel like a mistake. Cause that's a lie. And I get mad. I feel so mad right now because I know what it is. So we're going to break the spirit of guilt, the spirit of shame. shame for moms, you know, who maybe went through something similar. Moms who even lost their kids. Mm -hmm. Moms who are struggling with their kids. You know, so break the spirit of guilt and also pray for the children. And those children are probably maybe 40, 50 years old now because some of us live our whole life feeling unwanted. Mm -hmm. So we're going to pray for you. But first, we're going to answer your questions. So I see a question over there. Why children? I hope you're blessed with this. I know yeah, it was we, uh, heavy. We just, we just threw our life <laughs> once again. Last week and this week. Yes, so. yes, yes. For the glory of God. Yeah, you the devil is a liar. The devil one, is a liar. One of the greatest ways to get back to the enemy is to testify of the goodness yep. of the Lord. Yep, you know? Yep, yep. You know, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I know my life belongs to the Lord. I know without him, I can't do anything. You know, it's a just great reminder uh, that, you know, without God, you know. Yeah. It's uh, how do you feel yeah. now? That's no, no, let's, let's answer the first one. Uh -huh. This is for you because it's a parent. It says, 
Why is it so difficult for mothers or parents to tell the truth to their children? For example, in that case, for the spirit of rejection. I mean, you know, for me, as you say, I just wanted to find the right time because I didn't want to break her soul. She was so young. I wanted to make sure she's mature enough, you know, even spiritually. But I think, you know, parents are still human beings. The struggle is really real. Whether you are 20 or 50. Maybe they don't even know. What yeah, <laughs> sometimes they don't know yeah. or sometimes it's just hard, you know. And that's the thing with dealing with guilt and shame. Shame is a way to want to isolate you, even guilt. So you feel like if I say something, they won't see me that way or they're going to do this. But at the end of the day, it's because we don't want hurt, to hurt you mm -hmm. as parent. That's never our desire. And number two, you know, we're not sure. Can you handle it? I think that's the biggest thing. Can my child handle it? And then when can I tell her? So it becomes really hard. And the fear of being rejected also mm -hmm. comes into play. Mm -hmm. So it's not easy, but with the help of the Spirit of God, He can lead us to do it properly, to bring mending, healing, and restoration, and not to tear apart even more. Yeah. That's why I know uh, we have a tendency to want to fix everything. But sometimes there's something that needs the fixing of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So that's why we need to go to God uh, for wisdom and timing because I try to do it in my own strength. Every night I'm trying to, to rebuke and break that spirit but for some reason me speaking the truth to her was the, the channel of, for her deliverance and the mm -hmm. timing of God for sure. Mm -hmm. I hope I'm, I'm helping somebody with That's that. Good. You know. Uh, mm -hmm. So we, are, we all mean well. Mm -hmm. We all mean well. Okay. Um, next. So, Rafi, how do you feel now? I feel really, I feel great. You know what? I feel like now that I'm 21, you know, that's the age that mm -hmm. you had me. Mm -hmm. My 21st birthday was emotional for it you. Was, I, I felt liberated. <laughs> you, you, that's amazing. Uh, yeah, when you turn 21, it just, it's almost like, I don't know, I felt liberated. I can't even it's, it's spiritual explain, stuff. explain it. Yeah. But I feel, I feel great now. The questions I used to ask myself, the language that I used to have, I don't have it anymore. And um, I'm just glad. I'm glad that God allowed it to happen at that time so that I can move forward in my adulthood the right way. Because I can't imagine, you know, being an adult, going through those stuff. And it was just a dis horrible event, horrible time. And I'm just happy it's over. But, but you see how the enemy sometimes still want to. Of course. It becomes a place. Of course. Mm -hmm. Of course. And the thing about it, even after getting delivered from something, that's you still need to fight. That's what I was telling you guys earlier. Yes, you've been enlightened. Yes, you have understanding. Yes, there's no delivered. demonic activity. But you, you need to know where maybe your weakness mm -hmm. can be mm -hmm. so that you, you don't read into things. Mm -hmm. When something does happen, when you do actually get rejected it doesn't break you and you know how to act mm -hmm. so you need to learn your triggers mm -hmm. as a as a person mm -hmm. and you need to learn how to deal accordingly mm -hmm. so that it doesn't become if not it'll just become where the, the devil is going to keep smacking mm -hmm. you each time mm -hmm. so and this and this life is about consistency you can't just one day be all good and that no you have to continuously um build 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 even, you know, now that everything bad is broken out, you need to rebuild yourself now mm -hmm. and you need to learn your different triggers. Mm -hmm. so, That's so beautiful. I hope that makes sense what I just said. Yes. Do you think it's possible for a child to be delivered from this spirit of rejection without them, mom and child, having a conversation? Example, the child might fast, pray, indulge in spiritual warfare on their own. That's a great question. I wanted us really to touch it. I'll let you start with that. That's the beauty about God and the Spirit of God. You know, um, for, for this, I believe it was God choosing. It's always God who chooses how to deliver. Yes, because God wants us free and free indeed. So mm -hmm. if your mom is not around, if your mom is not present, if your mom is not in a place where she's open enough, God can still heal you and deliver you. We just need to go to Him and he will direct us and lead us. Mm -hmm. So God has different ways of healing his people. 
So whether yes. it's this or any other thing. So we go to God and then in his own beautiful way, he ministered to us, he ministered help, he ministered mm -hmm. deliverance. He could tell you, okay, give an offering and then that offering will bring healing and deliverance. He could say, get into the word of God, mm -hmm. get the word of God in you. The word of God in you would mm -hmm. remove that seed and break it. God would say, go for deliverance. You go, somebody will pray for you, you get delivered. You know, yes. there's so many ways. Through worship, God can come and deliver us because there's a lot of way God works and he delivers with so many things sometimes we just don't even know mm -hmm. so there's no rule in how do we do it our job is to bring it to God present it to God mm -hmm. and let him minister to us in a way that he desires and he longs yes. to do it for us because for everything is unto the glory of God the reason one of the reason I see he wanted to do it this way because Number one, there's a big ministry on your life, Rafi, that God wants you to minister to people. So there are certain things God allow to stay around. So you battle, you fight so that when you start ministering to people and that you know you've gone through, mm -hmm. this is your story. So that's one of the biggest thing I see why God would use this time wait for you to get a certain age for me to speak to you. So that you can give that ministry of deliverance and restoration for others. So, mm -hmm. but God has many facets of way to bring healing and restoration to anything. Yeah, and I just, I just started, you know, seeing this right now, and really, I think it can answer your question to a certain extent. Um, sometimes we feel like there's only one way, you mm -hmm. know, of fighting something. So you'll start declaring, you'll start this and that, but a lot of ways that the enemy can enter is through a wound so a wound in your heart that's why i, I really want to tell someone it's not okay to to have wounds that just remain in your heart do you, do you understand mm -hmm. different um things happen in your life maybe you've been betrayed by someone um maybe you know you've lost something important to you and, and you have this open wound in your heart it's not okay to leave it there because oftentimes the enemy is, he's just looking for a way to access you. And the heart is such a vulnerable place. So I just really want to encourage someone to deal with whatever wounds you have in your heart. It may not, you may not think it's connected. It's not, maybe it's not your mom mm -hmm. saying words to you. Maybe it's something else. But the spirit of rejection is no respecter. He's just looking for a way to enter. So whoever you are. Whoever you are, you know, right now who's having different wounds in their heart because of things that happen in their life, I really want to encourage you to ask God to heal you and to really restore your heart to become whole um, so that you don't give room to the enemy to enter, you know. So don't get distracted, you know, rebuking spirits. Focus on the condition of your heart and check in your life to make sure, is there any wounds I have that have not been healed properly? So I really, I just wanted to tell somebody that. Amen. 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 Right. So, you know, you know, the ministry of the gospel of Jesus is a ministry of restoration. And uh, some of you will find your healing and your restoration, even through this ministry. After we're going to pray for you because God wants that we get mm. well in everything. So do not lose hope. Do not think, oh, my mom is not around. So, oh, she's not willing. So am I stuck in that? No, 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 no. Today, we can be your mom. Today, the Spirit of God will use us to bring healing yeah. and restoration to you and uh, so that we can move forward. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was in the womb. Some, some children have experienced it from their mom exactly. as they were growing, growing up. up. Which become and they won't apologize either. Yes, <laughs> yes. So I it's it's extremely hard. So we will pray for you and God will will come to you to our rescue. Amen. Great. So this is for you. I think you've answered it a bit, but I just want you because I feel like many people have this question. Mm -hmm. If a parent is not courageous enough to talk about it, can he or she just pray for the child? Mm-hmm. Or do they need to say the truth the same way you did it? How would you? You know, every situation is different. We need courage, we ask for courage. I think we need to ask God because there's many different ways, but we need the courage of God because sometimes, especially if it's something that happened, 
not in the womb, but outside of the womb. Sometimes the child needs a verbal uh, talk and speech with the child. But at the end of the day, if you do not have courage today, do not push what needs to be pushed. Mm. Just go to God and wait on him. There's no hurry. There's no urgence. The Holy Spirit is there. He will create a, a scenario and a situation so that you will have the courage to do it. It might not be now. It might not be together. And it's tomorrow, but it's okay. As long as your heart is willing. Because if you are willing and obedient, God will lead you. So me, I have tried when you are younger. But I feel like, oh, no, no, I can't. She's too young. I didn't have the courage to do it because... As a mom, I thought a lot. But then at one point, I stopped. But then you started provoking my spirit by asking me those questions. Which was Holy Ghost right Which there. was God telling me she is ready to listen to it. So if you are a parent, do not be discouraged. Don't look for strength where you don't have it. Go to God and he'll give you the strength, the wisdom, mm -hmm. and the courage to do it mm -hmm. at the right time. Mm -hmm. At the right time. Great. So some children are still going through that even now. What would you advise to them, especially some who didn't get the opportunity to sit with parents and talk about it? Um, so she's already covered some of that, but I would advise to you, you should tell someone. Um, tell someone, this is how I feel. I feel this, this, and that. Um, it's good because when you speak something out, you it loses some sort of grip over you mm -hmm. and be ready to let go of it. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sorry to speak strongly, but some of us are almost attached to our pain. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like you wanna be set free, but you're so attached to your problem, to your dysfunction. Mm -hmm. So ask yourself, am I really ready to be delivered? Am I ready to let go and to go through this process? If you are ready, talk to someone and tell them I'm ready to be delivered. Talk to your pastor, or whatever okay making that choice is very important because it, you, it has to be a mind body soul thing where you're ready to completely release this uh, after that whatever they they give you as a guide maybe it's um, inner healing where you sit down because some people their parents are not even alive you can talk to your parent as if they were there and put some music and it's gonna be very painful I'm telling you right now but if you're ready to be delivered, God will deliver you. And even after that process, you need to start to change your language. And it will be difficult. I'm talking from experience because that's all you've known your whole life. Your whole life, you're used to saying, nobody loves me. I'm always this. I'm always a victim. So get ready now to change your language. It's very, very important. So um, go through that process with the, the assistance and the guide of someone mature, someone uh, who's maybe your spiritual leader, someone who's able to go with you in that process because it's going to be very difficult. And um, just know with the help of the Holy Spirit, like my mom said, he may give you specific instructions like go on a fast or uh, read the Bible. So to, for everyone, it's really different. Mm -hmm. But my advice to you is really be ready for it. Mm -hmm. Be ready for it because when it comes, it's going to come and ça va bouleverser ta vie. It's going yeah. to change everything you've known. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be, oh, I feel better now. That's going to be months down the road. Mm -hmm. It's going to be, um, you're going to see things. God is going to reveal things to you that you didn't know. Maybe you didn't even want to see. And um, you don't expect, you know, someone to give you an apology. Be ready to forgive without receiving that apology. I had the grace. My mom was able to say, I'm so sorry. Some people don't have that grace. Be ready to forgive without even someone giving you an apology and allow God to do the work in your heart. Mm. You can message me personally if you would like some more concrete examples because it's very personal according to your situation, but it's very possible even without the presence of a parent. Amen. Amen. So I think that's all for the questions here. Um, I want us to pray to for for you guys because this is really a God moment, you know, and if you're here watching today, it's because he wants to do a, a super work inside of you. And maybe this can be the start of your inner healing. It's going to be tough, and but you're not alone. And you, you have a mom here and you have me here. Um, you're not alone. Whoever is watching this right now and the Holy Spirit is there for you. So just get comfortable and um, 
we're just going to start and God is going to minister to your heart. Mm -hmm. I want to read Psalm 27, uh, Psalm 27 verse 10. I, I want to speak to somebody out there, you know, mm -hmm. you might not have really your parents who maybe they are not present and maybe they really rejected you for life. And uh, the Bible says in Psalm 27 verse 10, though my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Mm. Though my mom, Amen. my father, and my mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Mm. So we have a father who is in heaven, who with his open arms is always ready. He will be a father to you who will never leave you, never forsake you, never reject you, always accept you. So God will, is open. He is here all the time, always willing to accept, to receive the rejected, the broken, the unwanted. Mm -hmm. He is here. He is a father to you. He is a mother to you. So you will find healing in knowing even though my dad or my mom forsook me, they didn't want me. Mm -hmm. I have a father in heaven who will never forsake me, who wants me because he created me. He is, he is the one who has brought me onto this earth, onto this planet. So God will never forsake you. He's Amen. always there and willing to come to receive his children. Hallelujah. Amen. We're just going to pray Jesus. a little bit right now to do some ministry. Amen. Hallelujah. And just before I'm going to read to you, uh, take note, Isaiah 53. Um, it says, Isaiah 53, uh, verse 2, verse 3. Amen. It says, he was despised and rejected by men a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. We're talking mm. about Jesus Christ. Like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised mm. and we esteemed him not. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you can find yourself there. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Mm. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. Amen. He was crushed for our iniquities mm. the punishment that brought us peace was upon him mm -hmm. and by his wounds we yeah. are healed amen. amen amen this is your word today and jesus is here jesus who was afflicted jesus who was rejected he's here to do the work tonight mm -hmm. and yes nicole after this coronavirus we'll do many more retreats yes. so that we can go deeper into the ministry on a personal level hallelujah Amen. hallelujah we're gonna start praying to do ministry right now on the phone thank you jesus if you are here and this message spoke to you and you you have those feelings of wounds not being wanted not just by your parents even for friends i don't know what it is but there's a some root of rejection you we want to minister to you today because God is in our midst, want to heal. He wants to deliver. He wants to set us free. God wants to set his people free. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise, God. We give you praise. We give you praise. Today I come as a mother. This week is Mother's Day. To speak on the behalf of every mother. In this nation to speak to the children yeah. to say we don't mean wrong our love for you is never in question today I want to speak to every child who's been wounded broken hurt I want to ask for forgiveness on behalf on behalf of your mom I want to stand in the gap of your mom today and be her voice and say forgive us because sometimes we do not know what we are doing today i want to set you free from that feeling of rejection that feeling of feeling not good enough worthy enough today i want to speak to you give you words of tenderness love and mercy saying we love you i love you i care for you my love for you is without limit today i want to speak to every child's soul today that's been broken from the womb of their mom i want to release you as a mother in zion i say be free you are blessed and highly favored 
Amen. Today I declare over you that the blessing of God is upon you. I bless your life. Today I want to say you are good enough. Amen. You are lovable. You are beautiful. We give you praise, mighty God. Oh. We give you praise, Father God. Lord, I pray for every life that's been confined by fear, by pain, by suffering. I pray, Father God, a release and a freedom. Even now, I see somebody in a cage who's been confined. I see you full of fear. Today, by the Spirit of God, I open that cage and I say you are free. You are free to be who God has called you to, free, to be. You are free. You are not defined by the words of your mother. You are not defined by the words of your father. You are not defined by the words of your peers today. I release you from that cage of oppression. Today, I speak the light of Christ to come forward. To renew your mind, to renew your heart, to renew your strength. Yes, today I liberate you from that cage of affliction, from that cage of solitude, from that cage of fear. fear. I set you free in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, I give you praise. I see somebody full of discouragement today. I say, have courage. I speak into your spirit, into your soul. Have courage. Have courage. Yes. Have courage. Spirit. Come out of that place Amen. of discouragement. Come Amen. out of that place of defeat in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. Oh. Hallelujah. Today I want to speak to somebody today. The Bible says that before I knew you, before mm. I formed you in the womb of your mother, I knew you. Mm. The Lord says that he knew, you. he knew you. Even when your parents were not ready to receive you, mm. God says, I knew you. Mm -hmm. Before you were born, I set you apart. Amen. And I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Amen. I want to tell somebody, it doesn't matter, you know, whether the, the ignorance of your parents or of your siblings, of your families, if you were despised in your community, God said, I knew you mm. and I appointed you as a prophet to mm, the nations. Mm, mm. Do not disqualify yourself mm, mm. because of where you come from. Do not disqualify yourself because of the family you grew up in or the way you were brought up, the way you were, you know, uh, you, your upbringing. Mm. Amen. God said, I appointed you. Hallelujah. I appointed you mm. and I knew you. God says, I know you by name. I know the number of hairs on your heads. Oh, you have an identity in me. You have a place in me. And I appointed you for a mission. I appointed you to be a source of blessing. I appointed you because you have a purpose. I want to talk to someone who feels purposeless. God is saying, I have a purpose for you. For you. Do not disqualify yourself. You don't need anyone to believe in you because I believed in you before you could even do anything for me. Receive it in Hallelujah. Jesus name. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter who despised you. In your school, in your city, in your community, it doesn't matter how low you went. I have appointed you to be a prophet to the nation. Mm. And if I approve of you, who can who can go against it? Mm. Amen. 
Today I want to speak to every mother dealing with guilt. Every mother who thinks that they have made mistakes, even in raising up their children. I want to remind you that it's your love. Yes. It's your love that carry your children. Yes, yes. It's your presence that carry your children. It is the grace of God that carry your children. I want to remind you, at the end of the day, we are only human beings. Yes, yes, but we can yes, rely on yes, the yes, grace of yes, God. Yes. Even if we don't have what it takes sometimes to do what we need to do as parents, there's still a God who yeah. comes to balance out our in equation. In the things that we cannot do, God is here. And he just comes with his yes, grace yes, to yes. comfort and to encourage our children. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to talk to somebody who's maybe even a mom. Right now, you're dealing with low self-esteem. Mm. For some reason, you just... You see yourself as small. Mm. When you're around other people, you see yourself as small. Mm. All of a sudden, you lose your voice. All of a sudden, you lose your value. And God wants to restore you today. And he wants to give you a name. Amen? He wants to get rid of that seed of low self-esteem in your life. And he wants to restore your voice. He wants to restore your vision. He wants to restore your love. I want you now, wherever you are, just to refuse every lie that you, you have inside of you, telling you that you're little, telling you that you're small in the face of other people, telling you, you, you know what, you have nothing to give to others, telling you you're just passing by, that your presence doesn't do anything. God is restoring your esteem today. Mm. And he's giving you a true confidence that comes from Hallelujah. him. Robo confidence in who you are as a mother. Mm. Confidence in who you are as a wife, as a friend, as a leader. Confidence that comes from God. Stop putting yourself down. Stop looking down at yourself. God has appointed you as well. Mm. Begin to declare a new thing over your life. Begin to oppose the things that may come your way like arrows. And begin to rebuild. Begin to establish a new mm. thing in your life. Hallelujah. With the power of your words. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can we pray maybe for people who, who have a, a broken relationship with their parents? That God would be able to do something for them. Mm -hmm. To reconnect them. In a certain way or a time. Hallelujah. Let's pray for that. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm. Father God, we pray for broken families. Mm -hmm. Spirit of God, you are the God who is able to bring restoration to the families in this earth. Father God, I pray for the children who are being broken and they feel far away from their parents. Lord, I pray, Father God, that you will reach down to them. And that the love of God may come deep in their soul and to heal their wounds, mighty God. Amen. We pray for the parents whose children, Father God, have gone far from them. Father God, your God will restore. We ask you that you bring restoration in these families, Father God. We thank you because you are able to do it, mighty God. Hallelujah. Yeah. I want to pray for those people. Maybe you're out of touch with your parents. You guys have a bad relationship. Or maybe they're not even alive. I pray that you may be reconciled even in this evening. Mm. That God begins a restoration journey with you. Mm. That he reveals himself unto you as the father of the fatherless. Even though your parents, you know, you didn't get an opportunity to reconcile with them. That God would be able to reconcile you to yourself. Mm. And that you may find wholeness. That you would stop walking around feeling like there's a missing piece. Hallelujah. But that God fits that piece in your life. And removes that emptiness in your heart. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I keep hearing that word good enough. There's somebody here. Uh, it has nothing to do with your mom or your parents. Where you feel like you're not good enough for anything. You feel like, am I good enough? 
Uh, is there something good that can come to me? You don't feel worthy. I want to have you pray for that person who doesn't feel good enough. Yes. Oh, God, I thank you for that person or those people who feel like they're not good enough. That they can never measure up. Today mm. I'm going to declare mm. a new thing. Hallelujah. And the words that will come out of my mouth. I don't take them as a prayer for someone else. I want you to open up your heart. And to see God speaking into your life yes. right now. And yes. to receive it. Yes. In the name of Jesus. I declare that you are able. Mm. I declare that you are good enough. Mm. I declare that you are a good fit mm -hmm. for the task. Mm. I declare that you are the head and not the tail. Mm. I want you to say amen. amen. You are above and you are not beneath. Amen. You are not forgotten. You are remembered. Amen. You have something to give. You are not just a spectator. You have something to offer to the world. I declare that you are loved. Mm -hmm. You are loved not because of what you can do, mm -hmm. but because of who you are. Yes. And I declare that who you are is enough. Mm -hmm. Who you are is enough. You don't need to perform. Mm -hmm. You don't need to add extra sauce. Mm -hmm. Who you are is, is a enough. gift to the world. Uh -huh. We appreciate you and we love you. We did not forget about you. You are on our minds. You are on our hearts. You are beautiful in all your ways. Mm -hmm. Physically, you're beautiful. Mm -hmm. Inside, you are beautiful. Yes. You have a beautiful heart. Yes. You have a beautiful way of thinking. Mm. You are so, 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 so special. I'm coming to destroy every word that was spoken against you from others and from yourself. I'm destroying it today and I'm telling you that you are perfect the way you are. You don't need to add. You don't need to remove. You are perfectly made the way you are. And you are enough to us. You're enough to me. You're enough to your pastor. You're enough to your community. You're enough to your family. You are enough to your husband and you are enough to your children. Receive it in the name of Jesus. And I want you to declare, I'm enough. Say it out loud. I am enough. Don't whisper it. I want you to shout it out. Say, I am enough the way I am. I'm enough. Hallelujah. I feel this in my spirit. I want you to pray for that person who, who grew up that mama was praise acknowledged because they did something good as mm -hmm. a kid. So they think that they always it's, have to perform that's right. to, re to feel like they've done something new, to receive mm. uh, the love and the acceptance of somebody. That one who's performing to earn love mm -hmm. and ac acceptance yeah, yeah, from yeah, people yeah, or from yeah, God. Yeah, 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 the Bible says it's not by might nor by power, mm. but it's by the spirit. Yes. Your value is not found mm. in what you can do or what you've done 10 years ago. Like I said, your value is in who you are. I want yes. you to discover who you are yes. and I want you to see how amazing you are in yes. our eyes. Yes. 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 I want you to separate yourself from your works, separate yourself from yes. your accomplishments yes. and discover the beauty and the power mm -hmm. and whom God has created. Find the beauty and the power in the way you love others, in the way you love your children, in the way you walk and in the way you talk, not in the things and the accomplishments in the eyes of human beings, but in the value that God has given unto you. You are a vase of honor. You are beautiful. We want to put you in the front line so we can just admire who you are. That's how special you are. We don't want to hide you. We want to demonstrate you like this painting. Mm -hmm. You're like a painting in a museum. Mm -hmm. People want to come and they, you know, they want to take pictures of you. This is the image that I'm getting mm -hmm. in the spirit for you. Mm -hmm. You are on the front line. Mm -hmm. You are on display. Mm -hmm. You are a masterpiece. Mm -hmm. You're not a painting that talks. Mm -hmm. You just have to stand there mm -hmm. and be yourself. Mm -hmm. That's enough. Mm -hmm. We can smell your beauty. Mm -hmm. We can experience and see your beauty. Mm -hmm. You don't need to do anything. Mm -hmm. You don't need to sweat. Amen. You don't need to work. 
Amen. You don't need to prove to anybody. Mm. Mm. I want you to receive it. You are a masterpiece. You're a painting. You are a beautiful portrait in the eyes of God. And in the eyes of those who come around you. Stop fighting. Stop sweating. Stop proving. Stop working. And just be, be yourself. Be you. Hallelujah. Yes, God. You've been accepted in the beloved. Yes, Somebody's getting healed tonight. Mm. I want you wherever you are to begin to pray now. I want you now to begin to declare in your room the things and the counsel of God. Begin to do it right now with your own mouth. We're here to support you. We're here to carry you through. But now is your moment to declare a new thing. Come on. Open up. Open up your mouth. Declare something in your life. Declare the counsel of God in your life. Declare the plans of God in your life. Declare a new identity tonight. Come on. I want you to declare. I want you to declare. I'm no longer a slave. I am a child of the Most High God. I'm not a slave to rejection. And I'm not a slave to fear. I'm not a victim to what happened to me. I am who God says I am. Come on. Declare, 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 declare. We uproot every seed that's been planted in your soul, in your spirit. Every root that has brought destruction today, we uproot it in the mighty name of Jesus. Every root of shame, every root of guilt, we uproot it in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare a day of liberation, a day of freedom today in the mighty name of Jesus. You are not your past. You are not the mistake of your past. You are not the ways of your past. Today is liberation day to you. Today is independence day to you. Today is freedom day for you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you praise, Father God, that your people are moving forward. They're moving forward free, free from fear, free from condemnation, free from depression, free from oppression. Today, in the mighty name of Jesus, we send the fire of God in every home that's listening. We send the fire of God in every prison. We send the fire of God in any confusion. We send the fire of God to bring destiny to come forward, Father God. Today, we bring the fire of God to bring a revival in the heart of your people today, to bring a change and a solution in the heart of your people today. Today, we send the fire of God to bring deliverance in the mighty 
mighty name of Jesus. Oh, receive your Lord. portion today. Receive your portion receive today. It. 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 In the mighty name of receive Jesus. It. I feel the word for somebody. Mm. Deliverance is mm. knocking at your door. Oh, Will up. you open up? Hey, 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 Will hey, you hey. open up mm. for me? Mm. Will you open up for your restoration? Mm. I'm asking that question mm. to somebody today. Mm. Deliverance mm. is knocking at your door. Uh -huh. Will you open up? Uh -huh. Will you open up? Hey, 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 Father God, today we release the anointing to heal, to heal those in pain, to heal those who are suffering, to heal those who are broken, to heal those who are bleeding, Father God. I pray for every wound to be, to be healed today in the mighty name of Jesus. Let every heart to be restored today. I feel somebody here is going to start having the emotion and the pain of his past starting to come up. God wants you to know that it's because he's healed. He's healing you. He's healing you. And because he's healing you, he needs to bring all the things that you have pushed down so that he can restore you, so that he can deliver you. So when they come up, give them to the Lord. When they come up, give them to the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, I see somebody now coming out of the pit of depression and oppression. Mm. And they're coming out like a wounded mm. lion who's mm. been restored. And a lion that's been restored from their wounds mm. has a louder roar, has a stronger Hallelujah. roar, Hallelujah. has a stronger Hallelujah. authority, Hallelujah. has a stronger power. Hallelujah. Today, you're coming out with more authority, mm -hmm. more wisdom, mm -hmm. more power, and yes. more anointing on your head. Yes. I want you to roar over the enemy of your soul mm -hmm. today mm -hmm. because Victory is mm. at your door. Yes. Victory is in your house. Mm. Victory is in your room. Mm. I want a woman and a man to mm. roar in the face of their Hi. adversity. <laughs> to roar in the face of their past. <laughs> to roar in the face of their oppressor. <laughs> I see you wounded lion. I see you woman of God. I see you man of God. You're coming out stronger. You're coming out more powerful. You're coming out more influential the lion of the tribe of Judah is on your side and if God is for you then who can be against you I want you to release your roar today in your house to show the enemy that the battle has been won I don't put my trust in who I am but I put my trust in the one that is in me come on roar over your enemy Roar over your oppressor. Roar over your tormentor. Release what is in the You're gaining your authority back. You're gaining your voice back in your household. In Jesus' name. You're getting your voice back in your marriage. You're getting your voice back. Young woman, come on. Shotoroba, mama. Shotoroba. 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 I feel this word in my spirit. It's for somebody who's a mother or father. You know, right now you might be, you are in a place where you feel it. God, I've destroyed my child's life because of the way I elevate them and you feel guilt and shame, God wants to let you know that the journey of your child will bring, bring glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. That what yes. the enemy has meant for evil, God will turn it for his glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. It will be a testimony for his Amen. life, Lord. for his destiny in the Amen. mighty name of Jesus. You haven't ruined their mm. lives. You haven't. Yes. You have it. don't have that power, my mother no. and my brother. Mm. Ah. You don't. God has the final say. Yes. Oh, and he's got them covered. Yes. He wants them more than you want them. Yes. He's got them covered.
recover. Yes. I want you to go back to the day you dedicated mm. that child to mm. the Lord. Mm -hmm. You said this child is not mine, it's mm. yours. Mm. Go back to that day yes. and find rest. Find rest. Find rest. It is all good for yes. you. It's all good for your children. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What I love about God before we let you go. Nothing is wasted with him. Yes. Every Everything that comes for your life, whether good and bad, it becomes a powerful tool in the hands of God to turn it for his good. So do not be too stressed to be perfect yes. parents. Do Amen. not, do not, you know, I want to do be perfect, make sure I don't hurt my children. Just do life and love your children. That's it. And God will take whatever you give him and you work yes. it out. And the yes. end will be beautiful. Yes. So don't, don't get into the mode Jesus. of striving and working. Mm. Even in our raising of our children, yes. it's through that wow. place of rest. Let love be the motivator. Amen. Hallelujah. Do not yes. be afraid. Oh, I'm destroying my kids' life. Oh, you know, let's not fear drive you to do yes. certain things. Hallelujah. You, Let love be the motivator in everything yes. you do. Your children will be okay. okay. They'll be fine. They'll be okay. God bless you. God bless you. And I just want to mention and say thank you for your openness, mommy. Thank you. And thank you to my dad who's mm. not here in this video. Mm. We're going to have a time to talk with him mm -hmm. maybe on a Father's Day special. Yes. Thank you to my parents. Yes. Who always trusted God. Yes. With their children. That's right. And As for me and yes. Amadou and Aisha, it yes. is always going to be well. Amen. So thank you yeah. for that. And you know what I love about him? My husband always understood the space of each, of each, of each place I had yes. for either my children. So this was a space for me and my daughter. It had nothing to do with anybody else. And that's what God wants yeah. for everyone to hear and understand. Yeah. You know, this is a journey I have to walk with my daughter, without my husband, without my pastor, without anyone. Uh, so yeah. I, I thank God for his life for I that. God he for that understood too. that he and understood. let us live our journey together yeah. and i know yes. on father's day hopefully you guys can talk you about guys, your side you guys have a whole more to hear mm. but as for today that was all mm -hmm. and god bless you for your courage god bless you for your listening ears mm -hmm. and i'm so happy because something just got uh quelque chose a déclenché mm -hmm. in your house and in your life mm -hmm. and you're gonna see in the days to come what's gonna happen Mm -hmm. And you're going to be able to testify of it the same way we were able to testify mm. today. So God bless you guys. Amen. We love you so much. We love you. I hope you were blessed. Yeah. We are here to minister life to you. And we'll see you soon again. And Happy Mother's you. Day to every mother's yes. this coming week. I just want to tell you, you're doing an excellent doing work. Good. Keep it up. Keep what you're doing. But most important, show Jesus to your children. That's the greatest thing you can do yes. for your children at the end of the day. If you can show them your way to God, your way into, you yes. know, navigating your life, whether good or not, whatever it is. If you can lead them into this Jesus of yours. Yes. Even all your mistakes, your downfall, because they will come. They will not, there's no perfect parents. God will do a great work and lead your children in the places that they need to be. Love yes. you, love you, we love, love you. you. And we love you and we want you and you're beautiful mm. and we're hugging you mm. with our anointed hugs Hallelujah. today. Hallelujah. Receive Social it. Social distance hug. Receive it. We love you. See you soon, guys. See ya.